sorry to flood the my video uh, making so often with this topic of evolution for those not interested but I'm trying to work my way through the concepts in a comprehensive manner so maybe this video will be important to you maybe not here I have titled it you know evolution is not a threat because I realize now that there's way too much, uh, what do you want to call it, religious and political interest vested in the question of evolution that doesn't, that it should not be there. Okay? What should be there is that, okay, if we're going to use a Darwinian theory, and, you know, that's fine, then you're going to have to explain what is technically called morphological novelty. That means basically that a fish has fins. How do fins turn into hands or legs? Because in Darwinian um, evolution, everything has this common origin, and there's supposed to be a determinative selection. They call it natural selection. <clears throat> that's occurring randomly in the genes due to non-environmental factors this is current this is the neo-darwinian version not darwin's due to non-environmental factors genes change to produce more complex more advanced life forms and that's why morphological novelty becomes a key issue how do fins for example turn into hands or legs, what kind of morphological change in what they call body plans. You know, the body plan of a human is two arms, two legs, a head, and a trunk. The body plan of a fish is, you know, two fins usually on either side, a back fin that's bifurcated, and then this sort of like ob oblongate body. All right, how does that kind of change in a fish become a change in a man or from some other body type? You see the point? Okay, so that's the argument that's going on here. How, if it's natural selection according to Darwin, does this change occur? And the argument, of course, this is Discovery Institute. The argument here is that there's no evidence that this actually occurs. Okay, that's a big problem in evolution. How does it occur? Okay, but for the rest of us, the layman, Okay, we either believe in God or we don't. Okay, and why should this argument so wrap us up in a claim that one side or the other is true? Because there's no way arguments about evolution can prove either side true. That's been what, I, that's been what I've been making videos on for the last, what, two weeks now. God says in Genesis 1.24, let the earth produce. In other words, God is setting a rule that the, the biology at the time of the restoration of the earth, which, yes, was a miracle, literal six days. Restoration, not initial creation. He sets a rule. Hi, I'm going to enable biology to, to evolve. That's it, period. First on sea and then on land is the order it's stated in the Bible. Okay, well, so we know that some kind of evolution, if we're Christians and we believe in the Bible, we know some kind of evolution exists. So why do I care if the atheist wants to use the same data to claim God doesn't exist? You can't prove that. So why am I going to get upset with the atheist who wants to say, well, evolution proves that God doesn't exist? No, it doesn't. Because there's a decree of evolution in the Bible. Hello. You want to be an atheist, that's fine. But this is not the basis for proof. And evolution itself is all middle data. That doesn't prove how the universe got here. And I got a, a thing in the Bible that says God decreed it. So whatever they come up with here on either side of the fence to explain it, I want to know just because I'm curious. I'd be curious if I were an atheist. And I'd be curious if I were a Christian or any other kind of non-Christian. Let science do its thing. We shouldn't be, you know, having a science camp, whether you're an atheist 
or a theist. It shouldn't matter. Because if you're a theist, especially if you're a Christian, you can point to the Bible and say, God decreed evolution. So let's pursue the evolutionary issues. Let's find out. Don't you want to know? I mean, if I believe in God, I want to know why he does what he does. And one of the things he does is create. Okay, why did he do it this way? And if I'm an atheist, and I think that, oh, if I establish some autonomic process occurring, that means God doesn't exist. Hey, honey, if that makes you feel better, go for it. Because it doesn't really prove God doesn't exist. It does prove that there might be a natural process. And now we go back to true science. Is the Darwinian view of that natural process accurate or not? That's all. I Frankly, I told you in the last video, you know, it'd be nice if Darwin was right. I like the. It's kind of elegant to say that all life began from a common source. But there's no data to support it. Math doesn't support it. Genetics doesn't support it. And physics doesn't support it. That's the problem. In a sci-fi sense, it would be really nice if Darwin were right. It would be really nice if the neo-Darwinists were right. But there's nothing to support it, as this is one of the articles linked in the video description will explain. But do you get the point I'm trying to make from this? Why are we hampering science? which cannot answer the immaterial question of God's existence. Science can't answer it, even if they want to. Why are we shackling science with having to go to one side of the boat or the other? You know, in the old days, science was supposed to be, you know, conformed to whatever the prevailing religion was of that day, which in, you know, ancient times was Catholicism. Well, look, look at what a nightmare that turned out to be. Okay, but now they're going in the opposite direction. Science isn't science, or you're not allowed to get a peer review, or you get, you know, like Meyer right now is getting criticized by the rest of his, you know, colleagues, or some of them, because he's pointing out ideas that might, you know, accord with a theistic view of creation. Who cares? Because whatever Meyer comes up with isn't going to prove God exists can't. God is immaterial. This is all about material. And the atheist can't prove God does not exist. Honey, I don't care. What I do care about is the advancement of science for its own sake. Because the minute we start treating science as religion, we're in deep doo-doo. Historically, every time that science has been subrogated, to one religious position or another, that's when the whole world, the society, goes down. Okay, we can't afford that. So let's get rid of atheists. If you're an atheist, stop trying to use evolution to prove your atheism. Okay, you can be an atheist without this. And as a theist, I don't care which way this goes. Because I got the decree of God in the Bible saying that he authored it. And I don't even need to see that first to even imagine that he authored it. I know him. How he did it is just, you know, novelty. Morphological novelty. How'd that come about? That'd be nice to know. And it doesn't prove whether God exists. And it doesn't prove he doesn't exist. And if you want to abuse the data that way, that's your problem. I, I'm not interested. So I'm not interested in castigating the atheists who want to try to prove Darwin right. But I suggest to you that it's wrong to do that. Because even if somebody who's allegedly, and I'm not even sure of this, if Meyer really were a theist, proving something that the theist would support, or trying to, how do you know, atheist Darwinist, that he might not come up with more information that's going to prove you right? Iron sharpens iron. Let's just get rid of the whole religious question. Let's just pursue science for its own sake and let it go where it goes. Sorry about this rant. Peace out.